Getting back to the idea of Satan, Shaitan, the devil. The definition of conquest is the subjugation and assumption of control of a place or people by use of military force. Prior to the advent of Christianity and Islam, the devil as a fallen angel sent to challenge people and then oversee their souls in hell did not exist. Right before the Muslim conquest of Iran and later North Africa, those regions had set up wealthy kingdoms. They had cultures and flourishing cities where they practiced their ancient ways. For the most part, it was convert to Islam or die for most Persians or Iranians and other people in what we now refer to as the Middle East and forced enslavement for North Africans during the trans-Saharan slave trade. They either were forced into slavery or deposed out of Egypt and into Sudan, Somalia, and Ethiopia, where they were also enslaved in their home territories. In the 6th century, Christianity took a back seat for many years as Islam spread through North Africa and seeped into West Africa almost a century later, replacing Christianity and the ancient religions as the growing majority throughout Egypt, Ethiopia, Sudan, the Mandan-speaking nations in West Africa, and many more. The Holy Roman Empire by the 6th century or 500 AD and on was in ruins and they were fighting to regain most of the control in Europe, which they had lost to pagan warlords and there was no chance of regaining control in Africa since Muslims had already asserted power and control. Catholic missionaries were sent into Europe to reconvert the population from the top down, meaning they targeted nobility and then used the nobility to convert their subjects back to Christianity. The same was true in the case of the transatlantic slave trade almost a thousand years after the fall of Christianity in Europe. Prior to kidnapping African people from the land, Europeans entered as missionaries, where they set up centers and preached the gospel, teaching at length about the divinity of God and the evil of Satan, which the people of those lands had no concept of in the way that it was being taught to them by Europeans. The missionaries later expanded those centers into forts and castles to house captured Africans to be prepared for shipment to the Caribbean and the Americas to work for the rest of their lives under a brand of slavery that was unknown to African nations and most of the world. In many cases, African leaders would outcast their city's criminals to the European missionaries to be changed or saved by this foreign god, and these outcasts became catchers for the Europeans, and they were the main members of African society selling their people out for money, favors, and freedom from death that they would have received within their tribes for the crimes they committed. Since many African leaders were not willing to sell their people out to Europeans, the Europeans who entered as missionaries incited tribal wars to alienate the African nations from one another through divide and conquer. And through that method, they were able to secure more bodies for shipment. According to Jomo Kenyatta, the founding father and first president of Kenya, when the missionaries arrived, the Africans had the land and the missionaries had the Bible. They taught us how to pray with our eyes closed. When we opened them, they had the land and we had the Bible. I know I just said a lot there. Hopefully it was easy enough to follow, but I was laying a foundation or painting a picture of how the idea of Satan rose to power in the minds of so many people. Through coercion, threat of death, and murder of thousands of people in pre-existing empires with pre-existing religious systems, religions with the devil figure gained traction. Through fear, they have illustrated staying power. These facts bring into question the validity of not only the concept of Satan, but the sources of that concept as well. If African people were found practicing their ways, it was the ways of Satan or Shaitan. Accessing what Europeans and Arabs had little concept of in terms of spiritual connection was considered the ways of Satan or Shaitan. These groups that were conquered by Christians and Muslims had an understanding of creation and destruction as a duality, not separate personifications of characters named God and the devil. Those who destroyed entire nations of people conquered through violence, and to this day we still follow what was forced on our ancestors through cycles of fear. What European slave masters referred to as evil or the work of the devil included calling on forces other than the person of Jesus, using fire for conjure, 
using roots and powders to poison them for their treatment of us and gathering together to plot an overthrow of a maniacal order. These offenses were punishable by death. Imagine what twisted reality an oppressor creates where he doesn't believe he reserves the right to have justice served to him. Imagine the defeated mind of a woman who instills fear of Jesus into her son based on her fear of her slave master. She wants to teach her sons the ways of her parents, the names of power she's forgetting, but she doesn't want him to die calling on those names. Where does Satan dwell in a scenario like that?